Then faithful John led her to the ship joyfully, and the king, when he saw that her beauty was even greater than the picture had set forth, felt his heart leap at the sight. Then she climbed up into the ship, and the king received her. Faithful John stayed by the steersman and gave orders for the ship to push off, saying, Spread all sail, that she may fly like a bird in the air. So the king showed her all the golden things, each separately, the dishes, the bowls, the birds, the wild creatures, and the wonderful beasts. Many hours were passed in looking at them all. And in her pleasure, the princess never noticed that the ship was moving onwards. When she had examined the last, she thanked the merchant and prepared to return home. But when she came to the ship's side, she saw that they were on the high seas, far from land and speeding on under full sail. Ah, cried she, full of terror. I am betrayed and carried off by this merchant. Oh, that I had died rather than have fallen into his power. But the king took hold of her hand and said, No merchant am I, but a king, and no baser of birth than thyself. It is because of my overmastering love for thee that I have carried thee off by cunning. <laughs> The first time I saw thy picture, I fell fainting to the earth. When the princess of the Golden Palace heard this, she became more trustful, and her heart inclined favorably towards him, so that she willingly consented to become his wife. It happened, however, as they were still journeying, on the open sea that faithful John, as he sat in the forepart of the ship and made music, caught sight of three ravens in the air flying overhead. Then he stopped playing and listened to what they said to one another, for he understood them quite well. The first one cried, Aye, there goes the princess of the golden palace yes answered the second but he has not got her safe yet and the third said he has her though she sits beside him in the ship then the first one spoke again what does that avail him when they come on land a fox red horse will spring towards them then will the king try to mount him, and if he does, the horse will rise with him into the air, so that he will never see his bride again. The second raven asked, Is there no remedy? Oh yes, if another man mounts quickly and takes the pistol out of the holster and shoots the horse dead with it, he will save the young king. But who knows that and he that knows it and does it will become stone from toe to knee then said the second i know further that if the horse should be killed the young king will not even then be sure of his bride when they arrive at the castle there will lie a wrought bride shirt in a dish and it will seem all woven of gold and silver but it is really of sulfur and pitch and if he puts it on it will burn him to the marrow of his bones the third raven said <clears throat> is there no remedy oh yes answered the second if another man with gloves on picks up the shirt and throws it into the fire so that it is consumed, then is the young king delivered. But what avails that? He who knows it and does it will be turned into stone from his heart to his knee. 
Then spoke the third, I know yet more that even when the bride shirt is burnt up, the king is not sure of his bride. When at the wedding the dance begins and the young queen dances, she will suddenly grow pale and fall to the earth as if she were dead. And unless someone lifts her up and takes three drops of blood from her right breast, she will die. But he knew but he that knows this and does this will become stone from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot. When the ravens had spoken thus among themselves, they flew away. Faithful John had understood it all, and from that time he remained quiet and sad, for he thought to himself that were he to conceal what he had heard from his master, misfortune would befall, and were he to discover it, his own life would be sacrificed. At last, however, he said within himself, I will save my master, though I myself should perish. So when they came to land, it happened just as the ravens had foretold. There sprang forward a splendid fox red horse come on said the king he shall carry me to the castle and was going to mount when faithful john passed before him and mounted quickly drew the pistol out of the holster and shot the horse dead then the other servants of the king cried out for they did not wish well to faithful John. How shameful to kill that beautiful animal that was to have carried the king to his castle. But the king said, Hold your tongues and let him be. He is my faithful John. He knows what is the good of it.